Hey, what's up guys? Jerome here from The Bonsai Supply and today we're gonna give this very unusual pomegranate some TLC. So this is a Nishikan uh, Punica Granatum, which is a, the uh, Japanese variety. And what's cool about this tree is that it is twisting. So as it ages, it starts to twist, which is a really cool feature. And only the Nishikan does that, which is the Japanese variety. Now the Japanese variety is cold hardy, so it likes to go to sleep treat it just like any other deciduous tree that you have in your collection. I overwinter it with the rest of my deciduous trees. Uh, so I keep it right around 28 degrees Fahrenheit throughout the winter. So as you can see, this tree is just starting to twist. And as I said, the twisting happens at an older age and you can see it in the roots. The roots are starting to twist. So I know the rest of the tree will start to twist as well. Pomegranates have thorns and the uh, leaf pattern growth is an opposite leaf pattern. So you always get two and two and two and two, which means you can really easily work on the ramification because they naturally split into twos and into twos, which is super easy. Now this tree, I said it needs some TLC. It came originally from Florida. Well, it came originally from somewhere else. A friend of mine bought it, had it in Florida for two years in South Florida, where it was really, really hot. We are talking about growing some 10B. There's no cold there. He had it for about two years and the tree started to decline in health. So he called me up, he said, Jerome, I got this tree for you. I want you to nurse it back to health. Let me ship it to you. I said, sure, I like a challenge, ship it to me. So he shipped it to me. When it arrived, it was flowering and fruiting profusely. And I knew it was not flowering and fruiting because it was happy. It was doing that because it was in distress. So the first thing that I did is I removed all the flowers and fruits and just let the tree come back and put on as much growth as possible since I knew it wasn't that healthy. So actually what happened is that this, the entire tree started to really push out, but in this section here started to completely die off in the meantime, over the summertime. Where on the other hand, this side here started to grow uh, and it's pretty happy now. So as you can see, I have a good like almost a foot of growth that I have on this side, but this side completely died back and I can see that it's starting to die back all the way into here. So what I wanna to do today is first of all, remove the wire, take care of all of this um, dirty trunk here. So I'm gonna use some Immunox, mix it with uh, 10 part water, one part Immunox. Immunox is a, a fungicide and what I do is I mix it in with the water, uh, with the solution, take a toothbrush and just clean up the dirty section here of the trunk. Then I'm gonna take some, uh, wood carving tools which um, you can find on our Amazon shop. Uh, I'm going to leave the links below of all of the things that I'm going to use here today and I'm going to chase the, uh, the dead section back. I want to see how far down it goes because if it stops at some point um, I can try and preserve it. Now I do think that this entire section here I do want to try and preserve it uh, you know add, add some lime sulfur and uh, preserve the dead wood because I think if I lose this entire section, I lose a lot of uh, character and power uh, in this composition here. So I do want to keep this for now. Um, that wood holds a lot longer on pomegranate than it does on other deciduous trees. However, it still doesn't last as long as like, let's say on a conifer, there's no match, but it does last longer. So I do want to preserve all of this. So the first step that we're going to do here today is I clean up the trunk and use the wood carving tools and just remove all of this uh, bark here and chase it down and see how far down we have to go and see what we can do. So let's get to work.
All right, so once I went ahead and actually uh, cleaned off the entire trunk, I saw that this entire section here in the front is actually completely black. And as I run my uh, wood carving tool softly over it, the wood starts to fall off. So I have a feeling that this entire section here in the front is dead. Now, pomegranates are very known for having one branch per root sort of thing. So for instance, on this branch here that's still alive, I have only one branch up here that feeds all of these branches. And I do have a feeling that this branch, that the life vein is somewhere here in the back and is most likely this root down here. So this root, it looks like, keeps this entire section here alive. But as I go ahead and um, get closer to this section, I have to be careful as I run my tool over the uh, bark. As soon as I see green, I have to back off immediately since I only have a very, very small amount of uh, life vein left on the tree. And the life vein is literally one vein that's alive on the tree, that's called a life vein. So I have to be careful not to damage that vein. All right, so as I continue to go down, I see that there's some green on this uh, right side and some green on the left side. So that's still, that means that this section here is alive, but the center is dead. So as I continue, I have to be very careful since maybe this could be the root that's feeding the entire uh, branch that's left on the tree. So down here, I have to become very careful because here, this section seems to be alive. But then as I continue further around, this section over here seems to be dead again. So we seem to have a uh, pretty much a dead strip next to a live strip next to a dead strip. So I have to be very careful how I continue. <music> So as, I'm as my cleaning here is coming to an end, I can see that the uh, life vein and the dead wood is very intertwined. So for instance, on this section here, we have a dead root, we have life roots right next to it. And then this one is quite interesting. So we have a life vein that's hugging the dead wood in here. So the features here are very cool. Uh, the only thing I'm a little concerned about is that it seems like this section here is my life vein. So as you can see coming down from here, and this is it, it's a half an inch coming down like this and then spreading into this root. So originally I thought that this was my only life vein, but it looks like my only life vein is here in the front. So if this tree survives, if I can stop the, the dieback, then this could be a very cool future uh, project or a future tree with the dead wood and the live wood intertwining like that. So what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to go ahead and separate the life vein and the dead vein a little better, like as you can see here, for instance. And then I'm going to take a uh, lime sulfur and paint this upper section here um, and some of the roots where the division is really clear. I'm going to paint it with lime sulfur, which will then preserve the dead wood. So I will not have the dead wood deteriorating so I can preserve that. And then the last thing that I'm going to do is actually wire these four branches here that are still alive and just kind of point them up towards the sun a little bit so that they don't hang down like that. So I'm just going to bring them up like that. And that's all I'm going to do to these branches up here. I'm not going to put any shape into it because this is all that's alive here. <music>
So now that the uh, lime sulfur has been applied, I'm going to place this tree back out into full sun. Since we're in mid uh, fall already, the sun is not that intense anymore. So this tree is perfectly fine being put out into full sun at this time of the year. I want the uh, lime sulfur to really dry and penetrate. Um, as you can see over here, I just wired the branches and just kind of stuck them into the sun like that so that it's easier for them to grow. Um, what I can envision for this tree um, is that I'm going to create a small canopy on this side of the trunk and have this cool deadwood feature kind of go out of the canopy. So it will be kind of like a life death situation here. I can also see that I might repot this tree in spring into a much larger pot and let this tree just recover for the next several years just to see what it does and hopefully I don't get any more dieback than what I have already. So thank you guys so much for watching. Enjoy the rest of your week. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and I'll catch you guys next time.